In this tutorial, you will learn how to use Clearview Deconvolution in Imaris 9.3. This video is divided into two sections. First one focuses on setting deconvolution parameters for standard usage. Second explains the set of advanced Clearview options. To start, select an image processing icon, which opens the image processing pipeline editor and the image processing preview mode. First, you can adjust size of your preview by dragging image corners with left mouse button and moving the field of view with right mouse button. Its size affects speed of refreshing of the preview window. You can also switch between slice and volume preview mode. In the volume preview mode, you see the projection of entire dataset to a given plane, while in the slice mode, you can preview a selected plane. Within the display adjustment window, you see duplicated channels for the image processing preview. If the display adjustment window is not visible, press Ctrl D. Channels can be switched on and off and adjusted individually. You can also choose to auto-adjust all channels option. All image processing commands, including the convolution, are set up for individual channels in the image processing pipeline editor area on the left side of the screen. Simply select the convolution from the drop-down menu next to the selected channel and start setting up the parameters. In the first part of this tutorial, I will focus on the standard set of parameters. Number of iterations is by default set up to 10, which gives an optimal balance between speed and performance. Usually, between 10 and 20 iterations is enough for the algorithm to converge on the best solution. First, choose imaging modality from spinning this confocal white field fluorescence, laser scanning confocal, turf and bright field, which will give you a subset of additional values to set up. This image was acquired with spinning this confocal. If the values were not correctly saved within the metadata, you must fill in the values such as emission wavelength. Here, it's 593 nanometers for the red channel, Pinhole size is 40 micrometers here, objective lens magnification here was 10, and objective lens numerical aperture was 0.3. Please note that specimen refractive index equals to a default value 1.37, which is true for many biological specimens, but should be modified if the user knows the specifics of imaged sample. Distance from cover slip is set by default as half of the sample thickness. Last thing needed is selection of the immersion medium from the list. In this case, error objective was used. Once all parameters are set up for the first channel, copy the parameters on the right side of the drop down menu and paste it to the remaining channels. All settings are copied, and the only thing you need to change is the wavelength. If you are happy with the deconvolution preview, press OK. Let's now move on to advanced set of parameters. Users have a choice between robust, iterative and fastest, non-iterative algorithm. Robust is an iterative maximum likelihood estimator, will give the best results and is resistant to noise in the image. Fastest is non-iterative and uses an invert Wiener filter to reduce the processing time, typically by a factor of 4 compared with Robust. The primary algorithm in Robust is a modification of Richardson-Lucy algorithm with the addition of a slope term, also called heavy ball term. In the software, we call it iteration acceleration. The addition of heavy ball 
Iteration acceleration significantly reduces the number of iterations needed for the algorithm to converge on the best solution. In general, more iterations of this algorithm result in more sharpening, but too many iterations can lead to noise amplification and obviously is slower. The default number of iterations is 10. Was chosen based on our observations of how the algorithm converge and can be changed up to 25. The maximum number of iteration is set to limit empty computation. Let's now focus on two parameters, pre-sharpening gain and denoising filter size. Pre-sharpening gain sets the maximum gain of an inverse filter, which is applied to the data before iterations begin. The default value is 7. Increasing it results in a sharper image, but can emphasize noise, so you would adjust this parameter according to your data signal-to-noise ratio. You can increase it if you have high signal-to-noise ratio and reduce or switch off if low signal-to-noise ratio. The noising filter size refers to the deviation value used in the Gaussian filter applied during the denoising process. This parameter is set up in every units and the value shouldn't exceed one every unit. Small hint, if you deal with a noisy image, start with reducing pre-sharpening gain. The noising filter size doesn't have such a strong effect. Now, let's move to edge artifact reduction. When the raw volumetric data has sharp edges, boundaries, you can get ringing artifacts at the edges of the images. So this reflects and paths the image dimensions in the axis specified. Choosing one of these options will suppress artifacts if they appear. In practice, we rarely see these artifacts in XY, so the default should be fine, but Z boundary planes may show some artifacts if not padded. Thank you for your attention. Please look for other videos from Imiris 9.3 tutorial series.